video? Uh, yes. There you Great. go. We see you. <laughs> Good afternoon. See you later. Hi. Good afternoon, Chair Wiggins. Hello, Steve. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Fine, sir. Put you right on. Yeah. Other than that, it's pretty quiet today, I would say. Well, that's that's not always a bad thing, is it? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, uh, Brenda, but our member Francisco Martinez sent me an email that he has resigned from the board. Oh, wow. No, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, he, he's moved to Parker. And he knows oh. one, one of the conditions of being on the board, he has to be a resident. And I can read it to you. I regret to inform you that I have had to tender my resignation. My wife and I have moved to Parker this past week. And I know the condition of being on the board and being a resident of Inglewood. We were not sure the move was going to happen because a lot of things need to go right on multiple fronts. So I right. apologize for the suddenness of this resignation. Um. Ah, Steve, can you look out your window? There's a nice, there's a nice sunset. You're on mute. Yes, I was just looking in a mirror. It is very nice. It was nice getting up this morning and seeing blue skies, no smoke in the air, and just as clear as it could be. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. So I just got a phone call from Peter, so that's why I uh, had to jump off there for a minute. You also got an email from um, Caitlin Mercier saying she went to pick up her kitty cat and might be a little late for the meeting. Um, I'm not getting any of these emails. Do you mind uh, uh, after the call maybe to forward them to me? Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah, we'll send them to you. Okay. Well, there's Mr. Hobbitick. I think I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Chuck. Good evening, all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there's Peter. Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter.
it's interesting to read this uh, handbook for members of boards and commission that you gave out, Brenda. I was reading it, uh, <laughs> the order of uh, agendas calls for an invocation and a pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I saw that. Are we going to do a pledge of allegiance today? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, when I had council, I remember I had the invocation. Yeah. We yeah. did do the pledge of allegiance, but uh, <laughs> interesting. The other part about it was um, there should be an annual election of a chairperson and vice chairperson held by all board and commissions. Uh, an annual. So <laughs> I don't know if we're abiding by that or not. When's the last time right. there was an election? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we haven't had a conf confirmation of the election. It won't be until January 20th. So. <laughs> oh, no. We'll dress it in jam. We'll dress it after the first of the year. Sounds like a good idea, Peter. <laughs> Unless somebody wants to object to it. <laughs> Well, this is just the opportunity to provide comments. So that's right. We'll, exactly. Exactly. We'll from there. It's actually, it's something weird. we've been talking about is is just making sure that you know to we've we've been looking through just what uh, what the uh, the right things are to funnel through the water and sewer board for approval and recommendation and those kinds of things, and trying to get clarity out of the charter and the code and to make sure we're doing it right. So yeah. we're, we're trying to figure this all out uh, as, as all new in the roles to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Well, it's appreciated. I know this Just may come as a shock, but it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious, Brenda, have you had any um, public forum requests to get into our meeting yet today? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. I don't know if we're scaring them off or not, but <laughs> so used to having them come up to a meeting at, when we had it at City Hall there and they don't want to seem to get on Zoom here, I guess. Did you get a lot of people coming to those meetings? Oh, we used to get uh, one or two <laughs> On an average, every every month when we had a meeting, yes. Wow. Sometimes we'd get uh, five or six would come in behind uh, several people. They were talking about the rates and uh, how they were being charged, stuff like that. When you get when you're talking about raising money or increasing their fees, they'd show up. Other than that, they didn't really were too interested. Sure. Well, maybe they'll be showing up in. Uh... In January. Probably, probably in well, probably in June, I would say. June when they okay. Yeah, because they go into effect in April. April, right, yeah. And then their first bill wouldn't be until May. Yeah. And so yeah. then the first meeting after the first bill would be June. Yeah. I'm gonna be on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh you didn't plan it, did you? No. No. <laughs> I see Mr. Roth is here and Ms. Ridley's here. Now we got Mr. Moore and uh, the council members if they're coming. Uh, for the rest of you, Caitlin Mercier sent me an email and I think she also sent it to you, Brenda, that uh, she's uh, picking up her cat from the veterinarian and uh, she might be a little late for the meeting. And at the beginning, like I said, I got to email from uh, Mr. Frederico Martinez. He has resigned from the board since he moved out of the city. Oh, oh okay. We have one last board and so a board member and so the council will have to interview and put on somebody in his place or whoever. I think they might be doing that now. We'll have to ask them. I think they might have been doing interviews. Interviews, huh? Okay. Yeah, I think they already started them. So we'll have to see how that Good works. Mayor. Hi there. Good afternoon, Mayor. We were just talking about, are you holding interviews for boards and commissions at this time? We just had them last night. Oh, rats, because I just got a uh, resignation letter from uh, Mr. Mar Mr. Martinez on our board. He's moved out of the city. Oh, wow. Okay. So he can't be on the board anymore, so we will have a vacancy there. Yeah. 
Do we have an alternate? We don't have an alternate, do we? No, we don't have an alternate. I thought we. I thought we did. I thought we were supposed to, but I don't know who. It, who is it? Uh, uh, we could go back and look we, at this because yeah. this came up a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's Mr. Moore. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, John. And Chair Wiggins, I have a hard stop at six. So if, I, if we're not done, don't worry. I just, I have, I have a meeting with my boss at six. So. Details, okay. I thought Details. you were the boss. <laughs> oh, I am a boss, but I have a boss and a boss. So I'm meeting with is this Mr. Olson, the boss, or no, somebody? No, this is <laughs> provost. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not being taken to the shed. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, you're gonna probably just add more work on. You know, everybody's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you guys on COVID shutdown there? Do you? you know, it, it's really interesting. We are transitioning this week. We our positivity rates have been phenomenal. We have been under two, 3% all quarter, but it just spiked up and we're at 5.9, 14 day and three point something, seven days. But um, so we're under what Denver is, but in uh, deference to the city of Denver and what they're needing to do, we are transferring to all online next week. And then we're done. We are done with our 10 weeks. So we're sending them all home. Hopefully we're sending them home all having been quarantined and they won't get anybody sick when they get home. <laughs> but we're testing like nonstop. I, I get tested almost every week. Oh, and then this, you're on quarters, right? Right, we're on 10 week quarter system. So we're, we moved finals to um, online. So they're gonna go home and take finals after Thanksgiving. And then they don't come back until like January 11th. So oh, wow. a long break. Hopefully we will get beyond some of the worst, right? So really you just gotta get through the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I, we had this week to transition to online for next week if we wanted to. So I'm, I just converted all my classes to online this week just to make it easier. They all That's what they all wanted. Well, folks, uh, I see everybody's here except for Caitlin and she said she might be running a little late for the meeting. So why don't we call this uh, uh, member the Water and Sewer Board meeting for Tuesday, November 10th to order. And uh, I had previously approved the agenda, and I'll call the order. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll start off with uh, Mr. Uh, Hobanick. Sure. And Mr. Roth. I'm here. Mr. Moore. Present. Mrs. Ridley. Here. Uh, Mayor Olson. Here. Councilman Wink. Present. Councilman Anderson. Present. Okay, we have a uh, quorum, so uh, we'll do official business. And at this time, I would like to have a motion to accept the minutes from Tuesday, October 13th, Water and Sewer Board meeting. Is there anybody wish to make a motion to accept minutes? So moved. A second? I'll second. All right, if there are any corrections or not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes are approved. All right. The next item is a uh, public forum. And I think uh, Brenda said there so far has been nobody indicated they wish to attend the meeting at this time on our uh, Zoom meeting. Is that right, Brenda? That is correct. All right. Next item then is to move to uh, new business. Boards and Commission Committee Handbook. Uh, did you wish to comment on that, Mr. Peter? Uh, I'm actually going to turn this over to Brenda. She'll give a quick comment on this. I think it's a really brief item. Yep. So um, I was just asked by the city clerk's office to distribute this to our boards and commissions, which is you, and to have you guys review it um, and get back to me on any input that you might have for this. And I believe it's going to be brought before council in December. So if you wanna just email me any input, that would be wonderful. Very good, very good. 
Do you have a date by months. which uh, these are required, Brenda? Um, the first council meeting of the is, is on the seventh. So as long as we get it, I mean, I'd say a week before the seventh. That would be great. Seventh of December. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if we have it on our agenda for that night, um, but I really, we really need you to look at it. So <laughs> we, we need you to tell us whether it makes sense or not, if it fits what you think are the current practices that would be helpful. So um, really appreciate you taking it seriously and looking it over. Okay, with the, can we call you by phone or would you want to be it by email or? Uh, either is fine. Either, okay. I had a few of them I wanted to bring up, but other than that, no problem. Anybody Great. else want to make any comments on the handbook? So, um, actually, I got a date here. I apologize. Uh, the date that it's due, the comments are due by, is November 20th. Okay. So this month. That's yes. Pretty fast, yeah. Yes. Okay. And so, uh, are we going to be giving comments to myself or directly to uh, Mayor Olson? Doesn't it be, matter to me. It might be better if you give them to Brenda, but you can certainly call me and ask me about any of them or. Okay, well, uh, okay. anybody on the board want to comment on it? I mean, well, Councilman let's Anderson and start. Wink, I'm sure, is just as interested, so. Okay. Well, we'll send them to Brenda and Brenda can send them to the council because your folks are going to review it and, and make comments on it. So we'll send them to Brenda by November 20th. If that works, we'll go with that. Thank you. Okay, next item. Item B is the authorized ordinance for Big Dry Creek easement. And this one will be uh, uh, Deputy Director of Engineering Steve Simon. Thank you, Chair Wiggins and Director Van Rye. Can everyone see the uh, figure on the screen? We can. Yes. All right. So this agenda item is a board action to recommend um, the approval of an easement agreement with the Colorado Water Conservation Board. Um, the purposes of this easement is for initial construction uh, and for long-term operations and maintenance access uh, to the facility supporting the Big Dry, Big Dry Creek diversion project. I did brief the board last month on the um, on this agreement and some of the benefits um, of the, the diversion project, which I know the board has heard several times before. Um, uh, but again, to, to summarize, this is new infrastructure that is going to be constructed in Big Dry Creek um, that can divert effluent from Big Dry Creek downstream uh, of the um, existing Union Avenue intake. It will also include um, a renewable um, uh, hydro facility. Um, so this time around, I'd like to dive into um, the details or the, of the um, easement agreement. Um, so on the figure on your, sh on your screen, the areas in red are the new easement that will be acquired uh, as part of this agreement. This area is under the control of the Colorado Water and Conservation Board. Um, all other areas are either already City of Englewood property or within um, uh, public right of way. The total area of land acquisition is about 24,000 um, square feet. Uh, the term of the agreement is 25 years. Um, we are currently working on uh, renewal terms at the, at the expiration of that 25 years, um, uh, having an option to then negotiate and renew that contract. Uh, the cost of the easement is 40, 000, approximately $40,000. Um, Seth does believe this is a fair and reasonable cost. This was actually a negotiated um, cost that was, um, that was negotiated with the Colorado Water Conservation Board. They had act, there, there were methods that were proposed as part of the Chatfield Improvement Project. Um, and the result of that method um, actually had $120,000 um, appraisal fee. It was determined based on the environmental and the renewable energy benefits of this project um, to, to reduce that, um, to basically reduce that by two thirds um, to the, to the $40,000 cost that's uh, in the agreement. Um, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. I don't have any, and is anybody else on the board want to question? I, I'm, um, I'm, my only question is how, do, how does our, this is for an, a pipeline diversion, is that correct or not? 
That, that's correct. And, and if you can see my hand mouse here, I'll, I'll go through the facilities. So within this area here, um, new structure that'll be constructed that will have um, valving systems that will allow water to divert through a new pipeline that's going to run approximately through this alignment and then discharge down here. Some of that, as I discussed last month, some of that pipeline's actually uh, been constructed, constructed, and that was to take advantage of the pedestrian bike path that is it's not shown on this aerial, but um, I'm sure as most of you are aware that that now runs through here. Um, now what we need to do is construct the remaining um, about 200 feet of pipeline uh, and the diversion uh, structure itself. Um, pending the successful acquisition of this easement, the project would then proceed into there's there's, there's two permits that, that still need to be acquired that rely on having this easement. Once we get those permits, then we can proceed into construction. Okay, good. Thank you. Welcome. Peter, what's the diameter of this pipe? Steve, do you have that, what the diameter is? I do not have that. I can check on that and report back to the board. Just we curious. We'll get that back to you. Yeah. I'm just curious. Anybody else have any questions? All right, do you need a motion for the authorization of this easement? Steve? Uh, yeah, the motion would be to, to recommend. So this would then, um, so the next step for this pending uh, uh, board's approval of the motion would be uh, the agreement's actually gonna go to the Colorado Water Conservation Board on December 19th, and then it would be scheduled to go to Anglewood Council on December 7th. So the, the motion would be to recommend approval um, uh, recommend approval of this agreement. All right, does anybody on the board want to make the recommendation? I'll make the recommendation. Okay, Don, do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a second. Any further questions or comments? If not, could I get a vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion pass. All right, thank you. Next item C is the United States uh, uh, Geological um, Survey uh, Agreement Renewal here, a Joint Funding Ordinance. That's correct. So I'll, I'll dive right into that one, Chair Wiggins. So this agenda item sees board recommendation to approve the renewal of a joint funding agreement with, um, with USGS. This agreement establishes um, the terms and conditions for funding two uh, USGS operated gauging stations. These stations are critical to both uh, utilities operations as well as South Pat um, renew operations. Um, and they're both specific to each. So the Union Avenue gauge station on the, the, the south at the bottom part of your screen here, um, yeah. that directly supports um, utilities functions. The South Platte Renew directly supports um, that South Platte Renew functions. Um, so so that, that's an important distinction because 100% of the, um, the costs associated with utilities will go towards Union Avenue gauge station and then 100% of South Platte Renew would go to, to that gauge station. So um, the total costs for this joint funding agreement are approximately $60,000. Uh, USGS will contribute $20,000 to that and then Englewood um, is on the hook for $40,000. Among that $40,000, um, it's about $12,000 that, um, that will support the Union Avenue gauge station that would come out of utilities and then about 28,000 that would come out of um, South Platte Renew. So in terms of how these gauge stations are used uh, from the utility side, the, the Union Avenue is, is really strictly a flow monitoring station. And so that's, um, we, that's a, a, the data from that is required for us to do our monthly water resources accounting and, and operations will also use that uh, for operations decisions in cases where um, the river flow might be low and operations would choose to to, um, to draw raw water from other sources. Similarly for South Platte Renew, it's also used for operations as well as um, compliance decisions. The reason that one's more expensive is they just have more monitoring equipment related to, to water, uh, raw water quality. Uh, for Union Avenue, it's, it's strictly a flow monitoring station. Um, the costs were reviewed by South Platte Renew and utility staff. We found them all to be fair and reasonable. Uh, those costs cover L&M, they cover field visits, they cover replacement of um, uh, failing assets. Okay, does anybody on the board have any questions of Steve? 
If not, then uh, can I get a motion to approve this agreement with the United States Geological Survey with the City of Inglewood? Joint funding ordinance. I move that we approve the joint funding ordinance between the USGS and the City of Inglewood. Thank you, Mrs. Wink. Do we have a second? Uh, that wasn't Mrs. That Wink. Wasn't, I beg your pardon. It was Ridley. <laughs> Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Mrs. Wink, would you like to second the motion? And it's Dr. Wink. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. You have a second. Okay. Any corrections or so far on the item on the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Same sign. Um, disagreement. All right. The motion passed. And this, and this one will actually be, again, will come before council. And I'll be bringing it before council on behalf of both utilities and South Platte Renew together at the same time, since it does uh, affect both organizations. All right. I see nothing new for new business. Next item is old business. And we have flow it forward videos. And I think that is Brenda's uh, baby, I think. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to, last month when we had the, um, we were talking about the Flow It Forward program, I know that we were having some technical difficulties with the videos. And I think that we, we have a series of videos that have been developed and produced, and I think they're really, they're, they're really great uh, encapsulations, short encapsulations of why this is important. So I didn't want to lose the opportunity to have this board actually see those videos. So we've got about, I think we have five of them total. They're each about two minutes each. And so we were gonna run through those videos so that you could actually uh, could actually see what has been developed in terms of getting the story out to our community as, as to what these resources are and why it's important to invest in them. And so we, we wanted to bring them back now that we've, 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 we've done some practice with our, um, with our own uh, staff between Brenda and, and uh, Angela to ensure that, that the videos will play this time. And so we're going to try this again, and and ideally the the videos will play seamlessly and we'll be all set. All right. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right, excellent. Here we go. Sounds good. Hello, Anglewood. You may have heard a quirky little phrase that's being talked about all over town. Flow it forward. So, were you curious? Let me explain. Flow It Forward is Englewood's plan to replace outdated water systems and properly maintain them in the future. This will keep our systems running properly to serve our community and keep our residents safe. Much of our infrastructure is more than 70 years old. This is well beyond their recommended lifespan and they are in urgent need of repairs. Outdated storm water system pipes are undersized and nearly 65 years old. Upgrading these pipes to a larger size, in some cases to an 8 foot by 10 foot diameter, will help prevent flooding and sinkholes by more effectively carrying water. Englewood has more than 300 miles of water, sewer, or storm water pipes, and many of these must be repaired or replaced over the next 15 years. And both treatment plants require significant upgrades. While our water is clean, older pipes from the source to your home can cause discoloration and a funny taste. Replacing these lines will greatly improve drinking water quality. Who doesn't want better tasting water? You're probably asking yourself, what's this going to cost? All told, we're looking at $263 million to complete all repairs. Of course, this would happen over multiple years. This would include $35 million for storm drainage over the next five years, $168 million for drinking water repairs over the next 15 years, and $60 million for sewer repairs over the next 15 years. It sounds like a lot of money, and it is, but by selling long-term bonds, Englewood Water and sewer customers can afford these investments and still have some of the lowest water and sewer bills in the state. Let's take a look at a rate comparison for 6,000 gallons of water and wastewater with our neighbors. As you can see, at $46.86, we're well behind the $85 monthly average our neighboring communities pay. 
So just like recent investments for stormwater improvements, together we can make these investments in our water and wastewater systems with rate increases that still keep us below what neighboring communities pay. Thank you, Englewood, for flowing it forward for this generation and those to come. That was good. All right. That one is based on the original, uh, if you remember the original, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the article in the Citizen magazine that yeah. came out earlier this summer, that's what that is referencing as it, as it goes around. And it, it, it puts words and, uh, and narrative to that video. And so we'll go on to the next one. As the city of Inglewood and its residents continue to flow it forward and invest in the city's infrastructure, important steps were taken in 2020 to help keep us safer from flooding. A project that began in February and ended in June cleared debris from more than one mile of sewer pipe from Rotolo Park in Inglewood, winding all of the way to the South Platte River in Sheridan. All told, 300 cubic yards of sediment and debris were removed from the pipe. This equates to an astounding 20 dump truck loads of material. Debris included a 12-foot section of pipe that had buckled and was lodged within the pipe, three 5-foot pieces of asphalt and one 5-foot piece of concrete were also removed. Due to the confined conditions within the pipe, much of this work had to be performed by hand with saws and jackhammers. Following the cleanout, inspection video was taken to determine the pipe's condition. A flowable concrete mix was used to fill voids created by corrosion. This project will help prevent flooding and sinkholes by more effectively carrying water away from land, streets, and parking lots and into the South Platte River. Many of the pipes that carry this water are nearly 65 years old and too small for the volume of water. Much of it will need to be repaired or replaced over the next 15 years. Thank you, Inglewood, for making this possible as we all flow it forward for this generation and the next. one more i got uh, uh three, more. three three more yeah three more all right. all right here we go in 1952 two forward thinking men believed that the citizens of inglewood colorado needed access to their own clean water together they founded the allen water treatment plant it all starts as the Union Avenue and McClellan Reservoir pump stations deliver raw water to the treatment plant. The facility is capable of treating 28 million gallons of clean water each day. The treatment process begins by removing any unwanted sediment. As the waters mix, heavy particles and sediment sink to the bottom. The water then flows through three feet of carbon filters. This process works much like a giant filtering water pitcher. Then using UV technology, the water flows through pipes that blast UV rays into the water, killing any microorganisms that may be left over. Once the water is clean and safe to drink, large pumps distribute fresh water to homes and businesses across the city. While Inglewood's water is clean, the treatment plant requires ongoing investments and upgrades to its complex systems. These investments are critical in ensuring that it continues to operate and treat Inglewood's water. Additionally, older pipes that connect the plant to your homes can cause poor taste and discoloration. Replacing these lines will also help to improve the taste of our drinking water. As it's now our turn to flow it forward and continue to maintain and update our critical water infrastructure, we can do so and still keep our water bills lower than most of our neighbors. It's forward thinking and investment like this that will benefit us today and the next generation for those who are lucky enough to call Inglewood home.
So that's our water system video on the Allen plan. <laughs> The City of Inglewood presents Inglewood Moments in History. Inglewood's Water Independence. At the time Inglewood was incorporated in 1903, most residents relied on shallow wells or the city ditch to obtain water. At that time, the city council began discussing constructing a water main system in the fledgling city, setting the stage for securing Inglewood's most precious resource. In 1909, Inglewood contracted with the Denver Union Water Company for water service, but residents had to lay their own water mains. As the city grew, water pressure provided by the company became inadequate. In 1917, the Inglewood City Council asked voters to approve a bond issue for constructing an independent water system. It was defeated. Talk of annexing Inglewood into Denver surfaced in the early 1920s, spurred by water service problems with the Denver Water Board. Inglewood's mayor and city council were in favor of annexation. After infighting between the Chamber of Commerce and the city council, the annexation proposal was ultimately defeated. In 1948, the Denver Water Board issued new conditions for selling water to Inglewood and water rates increased 50%. The board created an additional burden by mandating that water mains and meters had to be installed at the customer's expense. In October of that year, Inglewood voters authorized the sale of $2 million in bonds to purchase water rights and build its own water treatment plant. The city purchased the Atchison Ranch at the mouth of Waterton Canyon, and soon after, McClellan Reservoir was established. With the completion of the new plant in 1952, Inglewood became Denver Water's first customer to create its own delivery system and ensure water independence. As residents are now being asked to flow it forward and make critical updates to the city's water infrastructure, it was this same proactive vision by its forefathers that played a critical role in keeping Inglewood's water bills lower than most of its neighbors. Newly constructed communities on the Front Range build and acquire their water supplies and infrastructure at significant costs. Inglewood proactively made this investment nearly a century ago, and many decades later, residents continue to reap the benefits of this foresight. And it all happened right here in what we call Inglewood, Colorado. I saw Chuck Hobbenick in one of those old pictures. <laughs> Back in the beginning, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have one more. <clears throat> Imagine our community without our most precious resource, water. What would happen to our crops, our nature reserves, our overall health? All our water is connected. It's part of one system. You see, water never disappears. It follows a cycle. We at South Platte Renew value our part in this cycle. We clean nearly 20 million gallons a day from 300,000 residents in Inglewood, Littleton, and 19 other communities surrounding the South Platte River per day. Our biological treatment limits the amount of chemicals and energy used to produce safe, clean water for everyone to enjoy. The renewed water returns to the South Platte watershed, which supports recreation, aquatic life, agriculture, industry, and health. We at South Platte Renew look towards a future of enhanced community vitality through environmental stewardship. We vow to protect, preserve, and revitalize this valuable life source for generations to come. Clean water connects us to each other, to our world.
Okay. So Thank those were the those were the five videos that we wanted to share, and and that's what's associated with the flow it forward right now to uh, really help our community see just in a snapshot what each one of these uh, critical utilities are and and how much goes into it, so that they can understand that that a little bit of what's behind uh, what when they turn on the tap or when they flush the toilet. So I'd be uh, I, I know early on when we were talking about rates and fees. Earlier this summer, one of the uh, uh, consistent points of feedback that we we took in was that to make sure how are we communicating this to the community, the importance of these types of uh, investments. And so this is just one aspect of that uh, process and ensuring that if, if someone wants to understand what South Platte Renew is, you can actually just click, you know, point them to a video and it, they in two minutes get a quick understanding of what it does and the magnitude of the organization and why it's important. I think you've done a good job on it, Marcel. Well, there's been a lot of people behind making these videos. We, those are, that's that's people who uh, who understand videos and know how to produce them. And I think they're they're actually really really uh, well done. Um, they all of them are. Yeah, they really are, Peter. Thank you for being so responsive to to the feedback. I think it's really important that we. We educate, I mean, some of these details are so technical and um, to help you and, and council and other staff, I think, just clarify questions that, are, that will be ongoing. These pieces are, are right on point. So thank you. They're really super well done. I absolutely agree with you. Great. Thank you. I will pass that along. Thank you, uh, Councilman Wink. That was good comments. Thank you. You know, the only other thing I would add is if you're if you're looking for more information on South Platte Renew, we actually did a a 10 minute video that was designed <laughs> for use in classrooms so the uh, a teacher could pull it from our website and then use it as a as an education module uh, to learn about wastewater treatment. And it actually specifically goes through the processes within South Platte Renew in much more detail to help help. Uh, you know, teach the teach uh, uh, students on on what the wa wastewater treatment process really is. We 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 spared you that ten minute video though. We figured this, <laughs> these videos were probably enough. <laughs> Can I ask? I enjoyed you it. Here? Yes. Um, what uh, what school ages is the video geared toward? It really we we made it so it was general enough that you could probably go into. Um, elementary age all the way up through high school. So there, there's, there's definitely technical elements of it, but it's, but it's enough that like middle school age, maybe not elementary, but middle school age kids can really start to understand um, what, the, what the elements of treatment are. So I think it's something that could be utilized in a, in a wider range. We try, to, we try to hit as wide a market as possible or wide a range of students as possible. Nothing that would be maybe applicable to a trade school, for example. Um, I th actually, I think a trade school could, uh, you know, oh. if I think it's something that could be used at a trade school. It's a, it's enough of a high level introduction yep. um, that it could it could be used there. Good. Very good. Um, I'm on the water advisor, the water program advisor board at Emily Griffith, which is why I asked. Um, good. We can talk offline about it more later. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I, next slide. Sorry, I had my hand up, but I maybe you can't see it. That's all right. Ahead, um, Peter, can you send us the link for the ten minute one, or is that on the website? And I'm just absolutely. We can. You know what we'll do? We can. We can send you the ten minute one, and if you'd like, we can bring that next month as a as a single video. It, it's it's up to you. Um, we we can show you. It's it's actually a good video. I've watched it a couple times. It, it's surprising how fast the discussion of wastewater treatment actually goes. It goes pretty quickly. So it's- uh, I don't think 10 minutes is a problem. I think all the members enjoy seeing it. I would. Okay, we'll we'll bring that next month. And then, but in the meantime, we'll get the link sent out to everybody so that you can, uh, Very you can look at it if you wanna uh, look beforehand. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anything mayor or you want? Um, yeah. Well, I just, I did wanna ask him one other question about the bio. Bot, what are the wastewater COVID testing going on? And if you had any update and how that's going, because I know we had trouble getting the data out of the 
companies? Yeah, we, I was actually just talking to Blair about this today and we we have been getting data from them. And it's interesting, we were expecting to see, you know, much more of a, an increase in, in loading in the wastewater and we're not really seeing it. And so part of the, part of the possible correlation is that it, it is that maybe the levels were similar, but the testing is, is revealing more positivity than was, was the case in March and April timeframe. But what here, how about this? I will, um, I will pull together a full, uh, a full analysis and, and uh, re report on BioBot and bring it to the committee next month and we can uh, discuss it with more detail if that if that works. That would be great. I think what um, a comment was made at Tri-County that our um, data was um, had been either slowed down or stopped and was messing up all the... So if that's not true, we need to make sure that it's not said. I can... I can find out. Um, I, I will find out if uh, if 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 the biobot data is getting to Tri County. We're also participating in the CSU study as well, so we're we're actually part of both of them. Maybe that's what got mixed up because they said that we switched to CSU, and I thought, gosh, I haven't heard anything about this. So anyway, any any info would be great. Okay, I will I will look into it. Any other uh, board members have any questions of staff or any questions? Okay, at this time it's yours, Peter, staff's choice. Uh, I, I have nothing tonight. I think we've covered everything that I had. Okay, well, if everybody wants to uh, wash their hands, put their mask on and go about whatever it is, we'll call <laughs> this meeting adjourned then. Thank you for your attendance, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you all. Take, Take care, care, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. Yeah. You as well. <laughs>